All right, this is going to be a really interesting video, and I think a lot of you are going to be very intrigued by this video. This is about a building of a product called a Fuego. Now, a lot of you are going to look at this and say, what the heck is a Fuego anyway? Well, let me back up a little bit by telling you about John Burt. He is a master woodworker, as you can see here in this picture. John was given the task to rebuild an antique machine called a Fuego. Now, I'm not going to tell you what a Fuego is because I want you to try and figure it out. Look at these pictures and try to figure out what kind of a machine is made out of wood. Now, there's a few other elements to it as well, and you'll see in some of the images. But I tell you, I was so intrigued watching him with this whole process. First off, the wood that he's using is a really high quality, super tight grain, not free, old growth redwood. Very, very rare wood. And the tolerances for what he's building this were just impeccable. It was, it was just masterful. There couldn't be any finish on it either. And he had to take into consideration wood movement, expansion and contraction because this is a functioning machine. Now, maybe by looking at these pictures, some of you have got an idea of what it is. There's a few clues in there, but you know, I'll bet you a lot of you aren't even going to figure it out until we have to tell you what it is. Rest assured, John's going to explain how he built this in just a few minutes. I'll get into the video. These are just the slides, but it was a long process. It took him several months to build this to find the right materials, to find all the, the details. The, you know, he, he was giving, given an old one to reproduce, so he had something to take measurements off of. But this whole unit here, it's called a Fuego, and I tell you, it, it's fascinating. So watch with me, and hopefully uh, you, you will be intrigued by this as well. And please forward this. There's the old one. Look at that. That's what he had to work off of. But please forward this to other woodworkers. I think it's the sort of thing that a lot of talented woodworkers would be very intrigued by. I doubt that anybody would want to recreate one of these, but it's such an old world piece of equipment. There's a clue. Look at that. What do you think that is? So many parts to this. So anyway, watch along and... Uh, Please uh, give me some comments on this too. Let me know what you think. Let me know what uh, what what your thoughts are. I try to put these woodworking videos out there for my friends and other woodworkers. I'm not making anything off of it, but I think I've got some pretty valuable stuff. So give a good look see and tell me what you think. Thanks. bellows. Um, it's a rectangular box with a piston in the middle and flapper valves and so it gives a constant draft. The, uh, because the sides are so thin, uh, all the, the um, angles are to, even though it looks rectangular, the angles and curves are all to bow the wood to the inside. So this edge here, which the side panel goes onto, is actually concave as is the other side, thin side panel. Also, the Fuego tapers five millimeters. It's narrower at the far end than it is at the near end. So the piston has sort of a compressive uh, wedge-shaped um, uh, action in the wood. I guess all of that is to compensate for the pressure, which is on the inside when it's operating, that wants to bow the sides out. 
So the, the uh, old way of dealing with uh, friction uh, was to put a piece of glass in the bottom so that the uh, piston rides on the glass. The gasketing material for the piston is rabbit fur. And so that will uh, compensate and compress so that uh, we don't get air leakage back and forth. What, what about the wood? You had, you had special things with this wood as well. Uh, this is old, uh, recycled old growth redwood. Very the original was that uh, Japanese red cedar called Sugi. Hopefully the last time I take it apart. Here's the, are, you, are you video? Yes, okay. go for it. Well, here's a flapper valve, and they're, they're beveled at the top so that they the hinge on the string. Uh -huh. So the air comes in through here and out through the you've side. Got, you've got a little copper gasket in there for wear? Yeah, there's a, wear, a sleeve in here for the pole so it doesn't wear away the wood. Show me the pole in that uh, rabbit for while you're at it so you can finish this up cleanly. And there's something special about the wood in that too. It's different. Well, th yeah, this is flat sawn redwood, and the uh, pole and the wedges are made out of uh, Japanese red oak. Oh. That's the piston rod. And that was sent to you special? Yes, it had to be Japanese red oak. Okay. Good job, John. When's this going to be done? Uh, I got it delivered on Sunday. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. None of these grooves are straight. It's all kind of bowed? Yeah, all the slots in the bottom and the top camber. They go in like this. So you had to hand cut each of those. You couldn't just run a router down there. Well, I did run a router down there. On what I did was I, I made the bottom wider than it needed to be. I hand planed the curve into the edge. And then I used that as a reference for the router. Oh, I then, see. Then I hand planed the edges straight again. <laughs> How did you know this? Just by studying the old piece, the yeah. original piece? Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time looking at Just looking seeing it, if yeah. it was warped or whether it was really made curved right. that way, and it yeah. was all made curved that way. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm waxing. I put some wax on the inside. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll stop the camera and pull it back on when you uh, get it all together. Okay, several hours have passed and you've actually sort of pre-assembled this thing. Wow. How much air is coming out of there, John? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's really a strong blast. And it's continuous blowing. It doesn't... Except when you stop. Except when you... <laughs> How hard is it to operate it in comparison to the uh, other one? Uh, well, the other one is a rotary compared to the old Fuego. That's what I meant, the old Fuego, the other one. But Not I can see the side belly out. Really? Let me see if I can catch that on the video as you're doing it. You gotta move your hand. Yeah, you got a better eye than I do. Wow. Pretty cool. That's absolutely fascinating. Good job, John. Good yeah. job. You should you should be really proud. So what's the next step? You just gotta pass muster. Gotta pass muster, huh? You gotta you are gonna screw it together or nail it together? Uh, the screws I've already got in, they have to nail up both sides, uh, with copper nails. You wanna make it so that you can disassemble it though, right? Yeah, if any repair work needs to be done in the future. Right. I didn't have that option on the original one. <laughs> The original one was just all nailed, right? Yep. And uh, because they made this out of redwood, um, the iron nails would have rusted even faster than the original one. So I asked uh, Yutaiki and he said copper nails were okay. Good. They'll match the redwood well too. Yeah, they look pretty in the brass. And what kind of finish? Just uh, what, what did you do to finish it? Uh, I sprayed on a, a diluted precipitated shellac just to seal up the wood. Because I see no gloss or no real appearance of a finish, but it's just uh, to seal up the pores? Yeah, 
Yeah, so okay. it won't uh, absorb moisture as quickly. Yeah, that kind of wood is really hydroscopic. And it's going up to Sausalito near the waterfront. So. Oh, too bad. Well, good job. You should be really proud of yourself. Well, I'm glad it works.